We welcome you to World Class Sunday School. As always, it's a pleasure to have you join us as we continue to read and study God's Word, Word of Prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity, another, another opportunity to share in your Word. We realize and know the importance of your Word. And so we just thank you for, for allowing us to read and research and research and just learn more about you. We love you, we praise you, we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Continuing in our winter quarter, uh, we're talking about the uh, faith that pleases God. And in unit one is entitled Profile in Faith. And today's lesson is entitled The Family of Faith. Uh, and it's coming from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. Uh, we have three outlines that's going to guide us today. The first outline is, and we're going to be looking at the genealogy of Jesus. Uh, and we're going to look at three sets of 14 generations. And the first outline is the first 14 set, sets of generation from Abraham to David. That's uh, Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 6a. The second outline is from David to the exile. Matthew chapter 1, verses 6b through 11. And then the third and final outline is from the exile to Christ. Matthew's first chapter, verses 12 through 17. Now, the Gospel of, of Matthew is written by Matthew, who was, who was a Jew. He was also known as Levi. And he was a, a tax collector for the Roman government. His work was, was a lucrative business, but uh, it was uh, despised by the Jewish people. Uh, Matthew quit this job of tax collecting to follow Christ. Now he wrote this gospel especially to Jewish readers. His purpose was to prove that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the eternal King. In our lesson today, we have the genealogy of Christ, as, as I stated earlier. And we're going to see, uh, according to the Gospel of Matthew, the, uh, the, four, the 42 generations that, that produced uh, Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the eternal King. Many people avoid reading uh, these genealogies for various reasons. Some think it's boring. Uh, some that think that it has no significance in the Word of God. Uh, some say that the names are too hard to pronounce. But I, I encourage you, it, it's really not boring when you know what you're reading about. And it has significance. We're going to see that today. And go ahead and, and, and call, try to uh, call those names out. Uh, I have a, uh, a a King James version of the Bible is what I use, and the names are broken down in syllables, and really it helps me to uh, pronounce them better. But I encourage you uh, not to not to look over the genealogy when you come to it. Go ahead and read it because we know that all the Bible. Uh, these are God-inspired words, and if God inspired it, that means that, that it has some significance. Okay, uh, the genealogy of Christ is important. It established the fact that Jesus Christ is the son of David, the son of Abraham. That's what Matthew is showing us here in this first chapter. Uh, the line of Abraham puts Jesus in the nation of Israel and the tribe of Judah. 
and the line of David puts him on the throne forever. Uh, the ge genealogy of Christ is also found in the Gospel of Luke. Matthew's genealogy shows 42 generations from Abraham to Jesus. But Luke's genealogy shows 56 generations from Jesus to Adam. Matthew's genealogy shows four Gentile women that's a part of Christ's lineage and Mary, which makes five women, but there are no women in Luke's account. Okay, so we're gonna just go ahead and, and uh, start here in our printed text. The first, start with our first outline, and our first outline is, and we're gonna see the lineage from Abraham to David. In the first verse, verse 1, we see the introduction of Jesus, and it, see, it reads like this. It says, The book of generations from Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And I said earlier that Matthew is going to show us, uh, uh, give us proof that Jesus Christ is who he say he is, the son of David, the son of of Abraham. Okay, now we know that, that the Bible in Genesis, beginning with chapters 1 and 2, we see the creation and how God created everything and how he created man and placed him in a perfect setting in the Garden of Eden. But when we get to chapter 3, we see that uh, and, and we're talking about the book of Genesis. When we get to chapter 3, we see the fall of man. So how sin entered into the garden. But in, in verse 15 of chapter 3, the promise God makes here. And I, I just want to read it. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, this verse is known as, and, and I just I just want to make sure I pronounce this right. Uh, this verse is known as a proto protoevangelium, which means good news or the gospel. And so way back here in, in Genesis, we see God making a promise that he would send a savior. Okay, that savior would come through the lineage of David. He would be the son of David and the son of Abraham. So I went back there to show you what, what has taken place here in this first verse. Christ being the son of David and the son of Abraham. God would create the nation of Israel through which Jesus the Messiah would come by calling out Abraham and promising him an heir. Let's look at verse 2. It says, and this is, uh, verse 2 is the pre-nation of, before the nation of Israel. And it says, Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob. And so here we see God calling out Abraham, and we know the promise that God made to Abraham that he would make of him, that he would be the father of many nations. And, and this is the beginning of the nation of Israel. When, Isaac, when Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob. Now we're going to see three sets of 14 generations. Now the first uh, 14 generations covered approximately 1100 years and Isaac was the promised heir to Abraham not not Ishmael and we know the story about how Ishmael uh, came about but Isaac was the promise uh, the promised son okay and, and, he, and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob God chose Jacob the youngest of the twins we know about Jacob and Esau, 
whose, whose name will become, Jacob's name, name will become Israel, the namesake for the nation for which Christ would come. Okay, 2B, and Jacob begat Judah and his brethren. Okay, now Judah was the third son of Jacob. And we know if, when we read these, we can see why God chose uh, Judah over his two older brothers. Judah, he was the third oldest son, and his brothers, they would become the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob had 12 sons, and they were, uh, each one was head over a tribe of, of, of Israel. And we know that they, they, there were 12 tribes named for these 12 sons. Okay, now in verse 3a said, this is the pre-monarch of Israel. And Judah begat Perez and Zara of Tamar. Okay, now Tamar, this is the first, uh, Tamar is the first woman in the, in the land. She was a Canaanite woman who posed as a prostitute to seduce her father-in-law, Judah. Now you had to go read the story, you'll see where Tamar was married to Judah's uh, son. He died, and uh, the custom was when her uh, husband died, then, the, then his brother would marry the, the, his, the widow, so the, the lineage, so the name would go on and she would be supported. But that didn't happen, so Tamar tricked her father-in-law into having sex with her, and as a result, uh, these two uh, sons were born. And we see it here in verse 3a. It says, And Judah begat Pharaoh and Zara of Tamar. And Pharaoh begat Esram, and Esram begat Aram. Okay, okay, and that, that's uh, verse 3, 3b. Okay, Esram was part of Jacob's family that moved to Egypt because of the famine. We know about that, how, that's how uh, Israel uh, came under the oppression of Egyptians. Uh, they moved in because of the famine and as a result they grew in numbers. Esram was part of, part of that movement. Okay, now in verses 3b and 4, and Pharaoh begat uh, Esram, and Esram begat Aram, and Aram begat Amminadad, uh, and Amminadad begat Nason, and Nason begat Sam. Okay, now here in verses 3b and 4, Aram and Amminadad are gener uh, generations born in Egypt while they were under the oppression of the Egyptians for over 400 years plus years, Aram and Amenadad was part of that generation. Verse 5, it says, And Selma begat Boaz of Rahab. Okay, uh, Amenadad and, and Nason were a part of the 40-year uh, wilderness wandering. You know, when, they, when God brought Israel out of Egypt, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, and Amenadad and Nason was part of that group. All right, and, and Nason begat Salmon. Salmon's generation was in Canaan in the days of Joshua. And then Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. Okay, now, now Rahab is the, the second woman in the line. She was a, a Gentile prostitute who hid the spies that uh, Joshua sent out to spy Jericho. We know all about that, how they promised uh, Rahab if she would uh, put a scarlet thread in the window because she hid them from the king, that they would consider her when they take over Jericho. And as a result, between her and Salmon, they begat Boaz, and we, and, out, and we know the story of Boaz and Ruth. We read about Ruth a couple of sections 
earlier. Ruth would be the third woman in the line. Now we know that Ruth was a Moabite who worshiped idols, but she was the daughter-in-law of Naomi. And we know because of the, the choice she made to serve the true and living God, she became a part of, of this lineage of, of Christ. 5b says, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king. Okay, so, so here David, uh, God chose Jesse's youngest son to be king over his people Israel and promised his throne would be established forever. So in this, this first 14 uh, gen groups uh, generation, we, we see we f uh, see from Abraham to David. Okay, now the second set, the, s the second outline, the second set of 14 generations, we're going to see from David to the exile. And that's uh, verses 6b through, and, and through 7a. And here beginning in verse 6b, we, we see the unified kingdom. And it says, And David the king begat Solomon, here uh, uh, got Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Okay, Bathsheba is not named by name, but we know that, that uh, by Matthew saying that she was the wife of Uriah, we know that this is Bathsheba. Now Bathsheba would be the fourth woman uh, in this land. The wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Bathsheba, we know that she committed adultery with David. And as a result of that, we see here in that Solomon was born. Okay, and then, then the, the kingdom of Judah is next, uh, 7b through verse 8. It says, and, and Rehoboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozah. Okay, here... Uh, uh, in these verses, these are the kings that ruled over the southern kingdom of Judah uh, from which Christ would come. The other ten tribes we know that, that had, they had made up the northern kingdom. Now Rehoboam, well, when he became in power, that's when the kingdom split. Okay, in verse 10 and 11 it says, and, and Ezekiah's begat Manasseh, and Manasseh begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josiah. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's verse 9 through 10. And verse 9 to, through 10 is from th these list of kings, some, out, of, out of these list of kings from Judah, some were good and some were evil. Josiah was among the good kings, and was credited with reinstating the temple worship and teaching the books of the law. And verse 11, and Josiah begat Jeconias and Jeconias uh, and his brethren about the time they were carried into Babylon. Okay, now we know about, that, about how God allowed Israel to go into Babylon for 70 years. And there are brings us to the third outline, which is the third 14th generation. And it says uh, the third 14th sets of generations covered about 600 years. It started with verse 12, see, and, and after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Selathias, and Selathias begat Zerubbabel. Okay, and Zerubbabel was instrumental in rebuilding the temple. He was the end of a kingly line in the Old Testament. And so verses 13 through 16, it says, And Zerubbabel begat Abiyat, uh, and Abiyat begat Elakim, and Elakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadak, and Sadak begat Achin, and Achin begat Eliadud. Verse 15, and Eliadud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Matthai, and Matthai begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, 
of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. And so when we read uh, verses 13 through 16, really there, there's nothing uh, biblical recorded about these men except their names. But this brings us to the term, uh, the, the return of the exiles to Jacob, uh, who is Jesus, who uh, is Jesus' adopted parental grandparent. In verse 16, Matthew did not say that Joseph begat Jesus. He said Joseph, the husband of Mary, for whom was Jesus born. That's, that's in verse, verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Now, here we have Mary, the fifth woman in the land. Now, Mary was a Jew, a virgin. And the reason it's stated like this is because Mary was impregnated when the Holy Ghost came upon her and the power of the high overshadowed her, according to Luke 135. And, and we know that Jesus, Jesus Christ was the promise made back in, that we looked at in Genesis 3.15. And Jesus Christ would come and live a sin, sinless life here on earth. But he would become, he would open the door uh, to the gospel that we saw when he gave, made a sacrifice because of his sinless life, he was the perfect sacrifice to pay our sin debt because uh, the wages of sin is death and our sin debt had to be paid. And Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice who willingly gave his life on Calvary's cross that we might have eternal life. And we saw how, how God uh, orchestrated the, the coming of the Messiah the uh, the king the, the the everlasting king how he how down through these forty two generations he brought his promise to fruition and here in verse uh, verse seventeen it says and we hear the generational summary says so all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen. Generations from David until carrying away into Babylon was 14 generations. And from carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Uh, and so that, that, that adds up to 40, 42 generations. And through 42 generations, through, through, through events over Thousands, these thousands of years, through good and bad, God fulfilled his promise of the Messiah. Just, just think about that. All, all the years, all, all the events that happened between the promise and the birth of Jesus, God fulfilled his promise. And what is that saying to us? It's, it's let, telling, letting us know and, and showing us that when God makes a promise, regardless of, of what happens around us, regardless of the length of time, God is always true to his promise. Always. And we can, we can stand on his promise. Way back in Genesis 3, when man allowed sin to come in the world, God promised a Messiah. And thousands of years later, down through 42 generations, well, actually more than 42, we just saw the 42 from Abraham to Christ. But down through all these generations, through all the events that happened in the world, through the, the good and the bad, God made his promise good. And, and look, that's something we can, we can put a stake in and we can stand on God's promises because God's promises are yea 
and amen. And Matthew took the time to show us uh, that, that Jesus Christ is who he say he is. He is the son of David, the son of Abraham, the promised Messiah, the one who, would, who God was send into the world to take away our sins. And we thank God for his promise. We thank God for, for being faithful. And we thank God for his son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this time. We give you praise, glory, and honor. And, and we just thank you for loving us so that even while we were yet sinners, you allowed your son to die to pay our sin debts. We love you. We praise you. We magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Well, friends, again, we thank you for joining us on today, and we look forward to having you in our next session. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer. And to our Internet guests, we're going to continue to remind you, if you haven't already, to please go down and subscribe to this cast so that when we come up, you'll be notified. That way you won't miss us. And also share with your family, your friends, your Sunday school classes that we're here so they too can join in and be blessed by the Word of God here at World Class Sunday School.